Hey everybody, today I'm going to talk about building your maximum amount of muscle with the specific protein requirements. So how much protein do you need and so forth? And it's all clinically backed. And honestly, every single day, you know, I get someone who gets into working out or any form of exercise, their emphasis is on protein, right? Basically, now why would this be? And the truth is, because it's protein is just essential to repair and growth. And obviously when you're working out, you tearing down things and you need to repair and grow the muscle. So now I get all the deep into all the topics based on, for example, your goal, right? Or the type of exercise you're doing versus, for example, endurance or muscle building or both. Or how much protein you need based on your age, you know, young versus old. And typically old older people need more protein. Or male versus female. And females actually need more protein or natural people versus drug assisted and people and drug assisted people can actually take more protein and so on and so forth. However, today I'm going to keep this really simple and yet very specific on as much as possible and focus primarily on building muscle. Now, if you have other specific questions for this, you know, for future videos, please leave your comments and questions below. And also make sure you subscribe to this channel, click that notification bell icon so you'll be notified when I release these specific videos so you don't miss any of these important informations in the future. Now, if also, if I select your question and post in future videos, you'll get free consultation with me or if you want any product or service I offer, again, all of it is for free. Now, with that said, today I'm going to focus on first, what's the optimal amount of daily protein intake you need for maximum muscle growth? Uh, how much protein per meal is best for maximum protein synthesis? Uh, how often should you be eating protein throughout the day? Uh, the most important times of protein consumption, as well as the best sources of protein. Now, before we get any started, I know everyone's, again, primary focus is on protein when it comes to building muscle, but this should not be the case, all right? In my opinion, you know, your protein intake should be, it's probably number three on the priority list, maybe even number four. Let me, let me go get more details about this. Number one is your hormones, because without a doubt, none of this matters if your hormones aren't optimal. You will never gain any or much of any muscle if your hormones basically suck. This means optimizing your anabolic hormones, primarily being testosterone, while at the same time minimizing catabolic hormones, primarily being cortisol. And I've listed the two best solutions for doing this below in the description area, so make sure you take a look after you watch this video in its entirety. Now, I'll get deep into this topic of hormones in future videos if you'd like, uh, give this video a thumbs up right now if that's what you want me to do and also your specific questions about hormones, again, below, leave them in the comment section. However, just remember, whether it's you and your girlfriend working out or a man and a woman, you can do everything perfectly, right? Eat the same, work out the same, rest the same and so forth. But there's one primary reason a man is bigger and stronger, more muscular than a woman, and that's testosterone. Now, don't argue this point because you will be wrong, generally speaking. And it's not growth hormone or insulin or IGF or some secret peptide, all right? Not even close. It's always been and will always be an anabolic androgenic steroid, all things being equal and genetics notwithstanding. This is why even an older version of you, okay, you will never be as muscular as a younger version of you. And that has to do with hormone levels. So make sure you optimize and maximize your hormones at any age, especially if you're over the age of 30. Again, more information below in the description area. Number two, the second most important factor, other than the, you know, on top of the protein, ahead of protein and gaining muscle is your total calories. Assuming you're not a beginner, you don't have some awesome genetics and you're not taking steroids, it's going to be very hard to gain muscle if you are in a calorie deficit, thus burning more calories than you're consuming. Thus, you need to be eating more calories. No amount of extra protein will fix this, all right, if you keep eating less and less total calories. This, of course, does not mean that you need to, quote-unquote, bulk or get fat. 
Even 250 or even 500 extra calories daily will do wonders as a starting point in giving your body what it needs to produce more muscle. So hormones and calories are more important than protein intake in the big picture. So please don't waste your time arguing or trolling or posting some negative comments because of some lame research or some pro bodybuilder or some so-called expert says something different based on some rare instance or isolated situation, all right? Focus on the big picture, the typical 80-20 rule. Now, earlier I said that protein might be number four priority. Basically, you must also work out and exercise to stimulate protein synthesis, thus the muscle, the breaking down of the muscle and so forth, and then the hormones and extra calories and protein intake can obviously create new muscle tissue. So with that out of the way, let's get started with the specific protein needs, all right? Now, the very first question I get asked is, how much protein should I eat daily? Now, the, the dietary reference intake, all right, you know, the, the, what the government will say, states that it's about 0.36 grams of protein per pound or 8.8 uh, 8 grams per kilo of body weight. This basically amounts to about, you know, 55 grams of protein daily for the average, you know, sedentary man or 45 uh, grams of uh, protein for average women. So this obviously isn't for us, you know, bodybuilding or exercising people. It's obviously too low. It's, it's more for survival and not for growth. For building muscle mass, clinical studies have shown a minimum of 1.6 grams per kilo or up to 2.2 grams per kilo. So, for example, if you're a 200-pound person, you weigh roughly 90 kilograms. Now, 90 kilograms times 1.6 you need roughly 145 or 150 grams of protein daily or up to, you know, 2.2, which would come out to 198 grams of protein. So roughly 150 to 200 grams daily is what is suggested. And this is right about what most people have, you know, heard over the years. Basically, take your body weight in pounds and eat that many grams of protein, right? Super simple. So if you weigh 200 pounds, eat 200 grams. And that's a really good starting point. Now, I suggest that if you are what's quote unquote a hard gainer or an ectomorph, right? Like skinnier guy. Or if you have a very fast metabolism and are fairly lean, then I would increase it to 1.25 grams or as high as 1.5 grams. So if you weigh 200 pounds, eat 250 to 30 grams. And this is what I do. Granted, I also do protein cycling and I've made a video about this in the past, and there's a link below in the description area. Also, eating more protein, right, to force more muscle growth, that's what you're thinking of doing, like what some pro bodybuilders suggest, won't work for us natural guys, because it can actually increase protein breakdown or oxidation, which we don't want, all right? Try to make up the extra calories, not with extra protein, but more healthy fats and good carbs. So, let's assume uh, the next question is basically how much protein per meal, all right? So let's assume you're like me, you, know, you weigh out 200 pounds and you're eating roughly 250 to 300 grams of protein daily, all right? The next question is how much protein should I eat per meal? As with everything, absorption and utilization is a major factor in concern. Now, studies have shown that a minimum of 20 grams of protein per meal is needed to increase nitrogen retention, basically protein. Some studies show 30 grams of protein for increased protein synthesis, which is what we want. And this is a good start, 20 to 30 grams. However, protein is required for lots of functions. Remember, it's for making of hormones and enzyme production and immune factors and basically non-muscle tissue repair and so forth, you know, organs, hair, skin, and, and so forth. So if you're working out hard, right, and you're trying to gain extra muscle like we all are, you're probably going to need more protein. So I suggest about 40 to 50 grams of protein per meal. Also, this big spike in protein consumption at once also causes a big spike in protein synthesis, which is what we want, especially us natural guys. You know, guys, you know, serious steroid users are in hyper protein synthesis all day long, 24 seven because of the steroids. So it's different for them. So we need to spike protein synthesis throughout the day. So going back to my 200 pound body, eating 250 to 30 grams of protein daily, I would basically split that up to five to six meals, about 40 to 50 grams of protein per meal. 
So the next question I get asked is, how often should I eat protein throughout the day? Now, just as I explained, in order for me to get my 200 to 300 grams of protein, I split it up to five to six meals. Now, you can go as low as four meals or maybe even as high as seven meals, all depending on your lifestyle, your appetite, and total calorie intake. Now, I know some studies have shown that it doesn't matter, right? You can get all that protein in one big sitting, blah, 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 right? Screw it, all right? Now, unlike carbohydrates and fats, protein doesn't get absorbed. It's being utilized all day long, so it needs to be, you know, consumed. So your goal is for tissue repair and building new muscle. That's happening all day long, so feed the muscle all day long. No professional bodybuilder or fitness person, right, is doing intermittent fasting, eating a few hundred grams of protein, you know, in one big sitting or during a four-hour time span in one or two big meals, all right? And all these big, awesome, you know, bodybuilders have great genetics and are taking tons of drugs. So what in the world makes you think that you can do it in one or two big meals, all right? Now, if you want to argue with this with me, right, fine, up to you. If you want to point out some clinical study that says the opposite, fine, your choice. If you want to give me some examples, like how Thomas DeLauer, you know, I've heard this from a bunch of posts, does intermittent fasting and keto diet and claims that he, you know, the way he looks and does and gains all this muscle that way, fine. However, based on my opinion, for example, I don't buy it for a second. Just using Thomas as an example, you do not look like this big ripped guy, all right, or this picture that I posted right here, unless you have great genetics and or are taking drugs or have taken drugs. At least in this, for example, picture, it's a little bit more believable. He still looks great, something that most of us can't achieve, even with drugs. I certainly can't. The point to all this is that us regular people, all right, need to eat protein throughout the day to maximize protein synthesis while minimizing protein oxidation, all right? But if you don't want to listen to me and want to keep arguing otherwise, it's fine. It's your body.